Oh, General, we've just General been... General Crowley. He's in your office, sir. Well, when am I going to start getting some of the help you've been promising? Where... Oh, excuse me. Well, General Savage, welcome back. How was your drop? Well, sir, I could have used three full squadrons, but it was adequate. I'd like you to meet Colonel Mark Royce. General Savage? Colonel. Honor. Like a cigarette, sir? Yes, I would. Thank you. Well, Colonel, you mentioned that you'd like to uh, sit in on an interrogation. Yes, sir. I think there should be one in progress now. Thank you. Why don't you ask Major Stovall? You met him when we came in here. He'll direct you to the briefing shack, and I'll join you there. Right, sir. No use tempting fate, is there, sir? You'll excuse me, sir? Yes, sir. That three on the mad stuff. Well, that was Mademoiselle from Harmon Tears. Well, after 45 missions, uh, I guess a man's entitled to a little superstition. Yeah, well, there's no use tempting phase. I take it Colonel Royce didn't make much of an impression on you. Oh, well, I don't know. Does it matter? It might. He's your new deputy group commander. What? You're always screaming you want more men. You know, I got a real working hero for you. But the Air Medal, the DFC, the Silver Star with clusters. Now, do you suddenly figure that the 918th needs a second in command, Wiley? <laughs> what is this? You want help, but you don't want too much help. Hmm? <laughs> well, don't fret about it, Frank. It's just a temporary assignment. We think we've got a good future group commander on our hands here. We want you to give him some working experience, and I want you to evaluate him for us. Future group commander. That's right. Here, this is record. Give him all the help you can. Right. Oh, and Frank, uh, keep this in mind. Nobody's trying to ease him into your job. Twelve o'clock high. A QM production. Starring Robert Lansing. Also starring John Larkin and Frank Overton with guest stars Rip Torn and Diana Vanderblees. Tonight's episode, The Lorelei. There she comes. No wounded aboard. All right, let's get going. Come on. That's it. It's a straight shot in. Just hold it steady, boy. Come on.
going through the waste door. Look too bad. You ever see a plane land without the whole crew falling all over themselves to get out of it? Where's Joseph? Joseph! must have brought her in. Hey, Joseph's, I suppose, but I don't know how he did it. He must have died just as she hit the runway. All right, Carpel, get the stretcher in there. I don't get this. Who cut the engines? Probably Kreider. Not me, sir. I never touched him. Well, who then? All right, Sergeant. Get this aircraft off the runway. Yes, sir. Don't let your imagination run away with you. following out their impossible orders. Well, it's a lot easier just playing chauffeur to a bomb load. Yeah, but you're not a career man, are you, Royce? Oh, no, sir, General. Behind all this still lurks the civilian who enlisted before he was drafted and grabbed a commission. As long as there's a war, I want to be in the front of it. I don't want to be behind it flying a desk. This is war. General Sherman is turning over in his grave. Hello, darling. General, uh, this is my wife, Carol. Now, uh, Carol, my CO, General Savage. This is right. I'm glad to know you, General. Wiley has told me so much about you. General Crow? But he's an old friend of the family. Let me get you a drink. Oh, no, Wait. dear. There's no time. Our car's waiting, as a matter of fact. Won't you stay? I can't, but I'll be free in a few days if the General will let you come to London. Uh, General, this woman has been in England for six months now, and I've seen her exactly, uh, well, approximately 82 seconds. I've hardly been here a week. Well, a week, six months, what difference is I've missed you. You know, she's not here to see me. She's here on business. Mm, what kind of business, Mrs. Wright? I'm with Bundles for Britain. Where well, she is, is, she practically runs bundles for Britain. Let me look at you, darling. Oh, Colonel Royce, I'm so proud of you. I told you you could make it, didn't I? General, you've no idea what it takes to get this man to move. Well, maybe that depends on where he wants to move to, Mrs. Wright. Anywhere, but at least forward. Well, darling, short but sweet. Listen, why don't you just forget about the whole work, work? darling, yours and mine. General, it's been most pleasant. This is right. Give my regards to Wiley, won't I you? I will. Carol. Excuse me, sir.
Hurd. I was just looking for you. You wanted to report on Lorelei? What shape she had? Well, sir, not too bad, considering. She caught several flak bursts, one forward, two in the main waist. And she still kept in the air? Yes, sir. How soon before you can have her back in service? Tomorrow with some pushing. How about her engines? Nothing wrong with them, sir. But they quit right after she landed. You said you didn't cut them. They quit natural, sir, out of gas. Well, the other planes uh, had a couple of hours left in them, Sergeant. The other planes didn't have flak holes in the fuel tank, sir. All right, well, we've got a fairly easy one tomorrow, so we probably won't need her, but um, you rush it anyway, sir. Yes, sir. All charts and recon photos are to be up no later than 0500. Oh, and throw in pictures of the last strike, too. The drop on the sub ends, take as much overtime, Harvey. Just came in, sir. Oh, swell, Dortmund. I knew why they would find some way to make tomorrow tougher. What about the weather? No change, General. Heavy overcast all the way. All available aircraft. This is a heavy one. How many can we put up, Harvey? 20. Second through the lower line? No, sir. I didn't think she was ready. Uh, Crowder says she will be, so make out a crew for her. Colonel Roy's commanding. The lower line? Uh, said you wanted to get away from that desk, but... I guess I do, but I didn't... That's better than no bird at all, I guess. Well... I'll hit the sack if there's no more for me to do here. No, this is just routine, Colonel. Briefing at 0430, first fire at 0615. Good night, sir. Good night. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Colonel. Uh, looks like we have a patch of blue sky. Well, I'm afraid it'll still be overcast over the target. I see you've done some redecorating. Yes, sir. Four Leaf Clover, same name as my first ship. Real lucky bird. I'll see you upstairs, Colonel. I don't care what that posy says, I still say it. The name of this plane is Jinx. leader to all badgers starting 90 degree right turn and close it up those fighters will be waiting for us let's go home lieutenant uh marowitz controls it jam the cables must be followed up somehow All the same to him, I'd like to stick with the family.
Red badge of one pulling out of formation, sir. It's holding steady. Badger leader to Red Badger one. Are you in trouble? Red Badger one to leader. Our controls are jammed. Bombardier to pilot. Bombardier to pilot. There's FWs coming at us. 11 o'clock level. We can play hide and seek back to base if we get this bird turned around. Colonel, they're free. Well, they are, well, seems like this girl's got a mind of her own. That's... Sir, that's the only kind of target she understands. Now, wait. You look at this. This is a piece of machinery. That's engines, wings, metal. It can't think, hear, feel anything. So stop trying to make something human out of it. Well, sir, it seems to be doing that all by our lonesome. <sighs> sir, General Savage is glad to have you back, and he'd like to see you in his office as soon as possible. Crater to give me a quick check on those flight controls of yours. Did I talk to you about it? No, sir, not yet. Well, they found a flag hole in one of the cable runs. The fragment may have jammed the system and then simply dropped out later. May have. Well, the point is, Colonel, that he found the trouble and he fixed it, so your airplane is serviceable. Which brings us to the subject of this particular little meeting. I, I think you're ready to take the group out. So you'll leave tomorrow. Well, in that case, General, I'd like another aircraft. You'd like one? Sir, nothing's going to change the laurel eye into another four-leaf clover. I mean, she's all mixed up. She's got a mind of her own. You never know what she's going to do next. If I'm going to conduct strikes from now on, General, I, I want to fly up. All I want a bird that likes me. And this plane doesn't like you, is that it, Colonel? Well, you know what I mean, sir. I'm half afraid I do. You get this fixed into your head, and you get it fixed right. No command decision of the 918th Bombardment Group is ever going to be based on superstition, Colonel. General, you've been on my back about this superstition business ever since a three on a match. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. But what I feel about this aircraft has nothing whatsoever to do with superstition. This bird, she's built wrong from stem to stern, from top to bottom. She's going to crack up and take ten men with her. I'd soon as not be one of them. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't 
Didn't mean to raise my voice. Every aircraft has its own peculiarities. Request refused. Sir. Colonel, are you declining to lead tomorrow's mission? Is that what the general would prefer? No, sir. I'll lead general with pleasure in whatever aircraft I'm assigned. <laughs> ahead and heavy, 30 seconds from IP. Pilot to Bombardier, center your PDI. She's all set, sir. All yours. You're going to sleep there? Let her go! I'm trying, sir! Something went wrong again! Oh, this miserable piece of junk. The whole group's waiting to bomb on us, sir. Blue Jay leader, Blue Jay leader to all Blue Jay. Well, what do you know? Bombs away. Well, what do you know? Scratch a couple of sheep. Well, at least it wasn't a total loss. Let's see if this bird will be generous enough to take us home. Together and we're gonna buy this here airplane, then we're gonna get us some matches and we're gonna have us a bomber barbecue. Colonel Royce? Uh, what happened, Colonel? Well, I don't know, General. The bomb release fouled and then let go all of a sudden for no reason. Of course, the whole group bombed on us, so it was a complete fiasco. When Sergeant Kreider turns in his report, I'd like to see it. Yes, of course, Colonel. Is it all, sir? That'll be all for now, Colonel. coincidence. Is it? Not really. I've been waiting. I heard you'd be at Trade Headquarters this afternoon. Oh, oh yes, your old friend. Wiley. I did ask him how to go about getting an appointment with a busy general. He mentioned you might be free this afternoon. It's a, an indecent hour, but uh, will you have cocktails with me? Well, I'd like to, Mrs. Royce, but I have to be back at the base by four. This time? I won't take no for an answer. The voice was dropping. 
Why thought we might go to the Savoy? I did invite you. Rank has its privileges, Mrs. Rose. And cloisters. And so I thought if I could get pictures of some of your men against a background of planes, we'd use them on our bundles for Britain posters. Well, you know the approach these men are giving. Are you... That sounds all right. I suppose you'd want to use your husband. Well, I suppose I'm prejudiced, but I do think he'd be a plus. You should have seen him on the war bond tour. Everybody loved him. Everybody has always loved him. That's why he'd make such a marvelous group leader. Don't you agree? Well, why should it matter whether I agree or not, Mrs. Roy? Because you're his sole judge. Because he'll stand or fall on the report you give of him. He uh, senses that you dislike him. It's a new experience, and he doesn't know how to handle it. Well, has he told you why he believes I dislike him? He says you've chosen to misinterpret the stand. He's taken over some airplane called... I think he said the Lorelei. No, don't misinterpret your husband, Mrs. Royce. He's a very superstitious man. My husband is a very warm and sensitive man. General, his crew are the ones who are afraid of that airplane, and he understands their fear. Surely a leader should be compassionate. When a leader begins to hide behind compassion or superstition... Well, you've already decided that my husband isn't fit for the job, haven't you? <sighs> Mrs. Royce... Well, I pity you, then. Because I'm sure that superstition would be far easier to live with than prejudice. At least my husband would give a man under him a chance to show what he could do. Even if it meant losing his own precious job in the process. Because no job would mean that much to him. Goodbye, General. Thank you for the drinks. Back yet, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Last one about ten minutes ago. All of them? Yes, sir. Flares from the leader, though. Wounded aboard. Well, let's go. Sergeant. Sir. What happened? Number two engine C's just they were setting down, General. A piston blew and a chunk of the cylinder wall went through the cockpit window. What about the pilot? Captain Parsons never knew what hit him. Parsons? Yes, sir. Colonel Royce reported sick. He's resting in his quarters now. Boy, there's one lucky man, General. Why aren't you in the hospital, Colonel? I'm not ill, sir. And why didn't you fly that mission? I'm sorry to disappoint you, General. All right, now, don't you get smart with me, because I'm in no mood for it. Wayne Parsons had a wife and four kids, and I'm going to have to tell them what happened. But first, you're going to tell me. According to Sergeant Kreider... According to Colonel Royce. How's your work, please? Well, General, I trust you had a productive conference in London. Like all conferences, General. It was long on talk and short on results. Promises instead of airplanes, sir. How are you, Colonel? Very fine, sir. Yes, the Colonel and I were just discussing that. Joe Cobb led the mission today. Parsons replaced Royce. I know. It was a terrible accident. I was just trying to get the Colonel to tell me the nature of this sudden illness that struck him. Well, perhaps you should ask Dr. Kaiser. Perhaps we both should, sir. I already have. You'll be pleased to know, Colonel, they've traced down the source of the food poisoning. As per your orders. Colonel Royce and a half a dozen other officers ate something from a food package received from the States. The other six men are still in the hospital. The colonel refused to join them despite his pain. He stepped down from personal command of the day's mission only on direct order from me. I see. Colonel, you'll excuse us now? Yes, sir. I'll see you in your office, General. Yes, sir.
My apologies, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Frank, to be honest with you, I just don't understand your attitude. You never have jumped to conclusions before. Let me ask you this. Could any commanding officer have done better than Royce did under the circumstances? Well, he... If you had been in so much pain that your presence might have jeopardized a mission, would you have waited for your superior officer to ground you? I might have. No. If I felt that my immediate superior considered me a coward. Royce has no reason to believe I consider him a coward. I don't. Well, General, what on earth is the problem? Look, Wiley, you asked me to evaluate this man's capabilities as a group leader. All right. In my opinion, he is... Totally unfit to hold such a post. Just because a man has a few superstitions. No, 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 no. It's, it's not... Superstition isn't his problem. I think it's a symptom of his problem. I had, uh, I had a drink with Carol Royce in London this afternoon. I found out from a good deal about both of them. Mrs. Royce is a loyal, a loving wife feels that her husband would make a good commander because... because everybody loves him. And you know, I think that's probably true. I think probably everybody has, or almost everybody has always loved him, helped him, encouraged him, his friends, his family. And fate. And that's it right there. Flying Lee Plane on a tough mission can be a lonely place, Joe. And sooner or later, every crutch this man has is going to desert him. And when that happens, he's going to feel that his luck has run out. That fate has turned against him. And then he's going to give up. Or run away. And that would be a tragedy, General. Group off at 0930. Sergeant Crider, check out the lower line? Yes, sir. He said he checked it thoroughly. Couldn't find anything wrong. Check in, navigator. Navigator to pilot, over Normandy coast, on course, on time. Righto. Pilot two gunners. Number three engine, sir, we're losing number three. I knew it. I knew it! All right, feather it. Oil pressure's falling on number two, sir. Still falling. Still falling, sir. Cut her back. Red dog leader to red dog two. Red dog leader to red dog two. Red dog two to leader. I've got one engine feather, the other is failing. I'm forced to abort. Take over. Roger, good luck, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Royce has two engines out. He's coming home. 
Red Dog Leader to Red Dog Control. Red Dog Leader to Red Dog Control. Go ahead, Red Dog Leader. Red Dog Leader to Red Dog Control. Now my number one engine is running rough. We're losing altitude fast. We're going to have to abandon this bird. Red Dog Control to Red Dog Leader. This is General Savage, Royce. What about your bomb load? We'll dump it in the channel, sir. What froze? The bombs, I can't release them. Red dog leader, red dog leader to red dog control. My bomb release mechanism is jammed. Well, get your flight engineer on it. Bailout, bailout. Now, Royce, listen to me. Stay with it until you get rid of your bomb loader. You're headed right for England. Sir, she's losing altitude too fast. I've got to get my crew out of here. She'll go down to the channel. There's nothing to worry about. Control to Royce. Let's get out of here. Come on, let's go. Come in. Red Dog Control to Red Dog Leader. Come in. Come in. They all bailed out. I, I counted them myself, sir. But the blooming plane keeps going on and on. They bailed out here, sir, a little east of Margate. The Laurel lies on a northwesterly heading. The fighters are trying to find it now, but the whole area is socked in. The course is roughly along this line. Major Cobb. Yes? Yes. Yes, thank you. Engines heard, sir, multiple. Here, east of Chelmsford, heading northwest at 8,000 feet. Fighters are being redirected. All right, so if she maintains her present course, she'll go over Northampton, Mr. Stoke and Trent, out of her Liverpool. If she stays up that long. Yeah, these people don't have enough problems with the look, Pop, and I'm not going to worry about us. Yeah. We can tell you Lily's warmed up and checked out, General. All right, thank you, Sergeant Joe. Let's go. Yes, Major Stoke. Yes, for just a moment. It's General Crow. Yes, sir. Frank, this is terrible. What are we going to do about it? I'm going after her now, sir. You can't shoot her down over England. No, sir. We're hoping she makes the sea. If she runs out of fuel before that, I'll just have to pick the best spot I can find. Fine, Frank. Oh, by the way, the entire crew was picked up. They're all okay. And Frank... I'd like to offer my apologies. All right, I better get going, sir. Yes, of course, General. to Red Pine Tree Control. 317 to Red Pine Tree Control. Holding steady at 9,000 feet over heavy cloud cover. Is there any change in the course of our target? This is Pine Tree Control to 317. Aircraft bearing north of Coventry. Still on northwesterly heading. She's drifting, sir. Correct to 292. How far behind are we? Approximately 10 minutes, sir. She's on two engines. Shouldn't take us too long to catch her. If she stays aloft. But we're 
are they now? Where? Has he made contact yet? Pilot and navigator, what's our position now? Directly over Liverpool, sir. 317 to Liverpool control. 317 to Liverpool control. We're unable to locate our target above the cloud layer. What's your ceiling down there? Liverpool control to 317. My ceiling is 3500. Any sign of our target? He must be inside the cloud cover, sir. All right, I'm going to drop into this stuff and look for her down there. I call off your RAF fighters. I don't want to run into a lot of traffic. <laughs> Target sighted. Altitude 3400. Over Liverpool. Heading out to sea. Roger. 3600, sir. All right, pilot to crew. We're coming out of it. Keep your eyes open. She's over the city. Bombardier to pilot. Nine o'clock. Pilot to all gunners. Gotta move in a little bit closer. I'll give you a good country shot at him. All right, fire away. The Shafe headquarters will be just temporary, Colonel. I know how you hate desk jobs, but they're necessary. Oh, General, it'd be foolish for me to say that my time here has been a barrel of laughs, but it has been instructive. I want you to know that. I may learn slowly, but I learn. I'm getting a little tired of using crutches. I don't expect to use them forever. Well, as I said, Colonel, your assignment to Shafe will be just temporary. I hope so, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Message from Wing. We can expect five replacement aircraft by the end of the week. It's about time. If I were the general, I'd keep my fingers crossed. Thank you. 